Now, my next guest speaker, uh, her name is Geno Vivev. Uh, she is the principal founder and CEO at Agro Ledger. Welcome. The digital floor is yours. It's been very fascinating to hear my fellow uh, presenters. And for me, I'm actually going to take you one step in, which is really talking about what we're doing and where I see blockchain uh, cryptocurrency, either in the form of Bitcoin or even, as we can say, stablecoin, really being the support to what I call innovation in achieving global sustainability. So I've been working in the microcosm of uh, agriculture, really, I even though it's agriculture and we hear a lot about supply chain, as was uh, mentioned by Zara earlier, this is really about creating value chain. And this does involve gamification because as we know, getting various groups to work together requires gamification. So we started our journey prior to this, but this is really where we started really our implementation. Our first implementation was in Haiti. When we look at Haiti, it's full of history. FAO says that unfortunately, Haiti produces about 1.2 billion in food and 1.4 of it is actually imported and only 25 million makes it to external market. So as you can imagine, food security is a very big issue and it's acerbated by political instability. So we did a project in Haiti, transporting mangoes from Haiti to uh, the US and we were able to reduce waste by 42%, increase export by 60%. But better than that, we actually achieved where farmers' income was increased by 750%. They received from what was 2% to 68%. The next project we're working on is in Tanzania. We were awarded a mandate and we are actually looking to go live with the farmers in uh, April, no, sorry, March, March 15. And this will be for about a population of about 36,000 farmers. And the fundamental change in both is really we are allowing the producers to own their product further down the value chain. So this is restructuring. And it's really bringing into light how can they have a bigger part of the profit. So imagine Haiti, they went from 2% to 68% of the product. I think that if we get to 50, that's a life changing. According to um, FAO, if we were able to increase the farmer's income by 30% from present, that would remove many of them from abject poverty. What we're looking at is at least going to two, three, I want hundreds next to that. So really this is about pushing market. And this is where blockchain technology comes in. The next uh, project that we've been looking at, so it kind of for all of us, we know we've been hearing a lot about places like Africa, uh, the Caribbean and Latin America. So the greater South, how blockchain can really support them in creating better prosperity and equity for them. But that's not, the problem is not only in the greater south is also in the greater now north but the challenges or the ideas are different so we've been working for the last year on a project called vink this is coming into fruition first we started looking at a european grant but this is really about creating a flexible platform for data analysis and this is one of the things we didn't talk about previously which is blockchain technology what it actually provides is the ability to have data that we all agree is truth, or at least the truth of the moment. And that can create tools, knowledge, information that allows for everyone to get to prosperity. So I'm going to take you down to uh, what we have actually. So we did a big thing with the European Union. If any of you have ever done a European Union grant, you will know how hard it is that is. But the learnings are great because you can then take it and take little small pieces and work on them. So we created something called Crowdfield Companion, which is a decentralized collaboration to support regenerative shift in agriculture. The fundamental difference when you look at technology 
in the greater south is there's none. So digital transformation, you can be very greenfield because they have nothing that works. They don't. And so they will take to it and they will accept it in a much faster way. In the greater north, we have laws, we have technology, ain't broken. It doesn't work perfectly, but to the, to the masses, it's not broken. So we went into a project with the University of our Universidad Rovira Vigili, which is URV to me in uh, Saragona, working with Origin Chain and Chenolia, which is applied science. And we applied for a Tubal grant, which is a small grant, uh, which is a next generation internet. The idea is how do you create decentralized co-creation communities? So co-learning, because when we look at traditional agriculture, it requires fertilizer, pesticide, weed, water management, and we all know this is destroying our ground. So all these uh, aspects, including water management, energy, are really creating a challenge. Why would you want to have a decentralized community? It's because there is a need to preserve the soil, it depends on many factors. It's a long-term process. And more than anything else, it requires knowledge and technology. So why do we want to get to decentralized? Is to really be able to have the farmers, the service providers, and the scientists, because usually they're at odd. And if you can then get this information to consumers, you can then assure that the knowledge is done well. And this is not where you can create that knowledge without bringing in that technology in there. So we looked at a solution which connected the research platform and also the external project and putting in their blockchain technology along with, as you can see, there's the interoperability that we look at during. So even though we have done our part, we believe that this is really the opportunity of bringing many more to be able to create full setup and, and also scalability in there. It's really about connecting research. So you have the producers, the scientists, the service providers, and blockchain is the beginning of it. And then it allows you to be able to bring the data, the crowd intelligence, and shared knowledge. Crowdfield Companion, as I said, is a little project that we're doing with Origin Chain. So Origin Chain and I are the technical providers, and we have created on the Elastria public permission blockchain. So if you guys are not aware of it, it is the Spain uh, blockchain, but we've also looked to put it onto the Ethereum. So it really is not uh, dependent chain base uh, or let's say protocol base. We've also have a digital wallet. And what we're doing is we're getting to, we, all of us who are intimated in the space will know that the events of the last year have put another black mark. The old black mark was this is for uh, drug and arms. Now we have where people's bad behavior has made the public very, um, worried, like, am I going to have my, if I invest in this application, uh, in this technology, or am I going to have my stuff stolen? So this is where we're using in this project, the idea of a non-fungible token, which is giving uh, people evidence that they have participated, or that they are part of the community and allows them to be able to vote on project outcome and also be much more comfortable. So think about it like when we first got our email accounts, some of us thought, oh my God, this is the devil. What am I, where is my information going? But today, everyone is very comfortable. So how do we get individual? It's really in this gamification of playing in something which relates to their work. So, sorry. What we have done is really creating the acknowledgeable, and we're starting by working in the region of Catalonia in Spain, which some of you, if you're not uh, familiar, it's near Barcelona, and really looking at various vineyards 
and looking at really creating this self-cognizant collective creativity, so what we call a living lab. We have started by looking at putting cameras on uh, the grapes and looking at them as they grow and creating with this not only information from the sensors, so this is really about bringing other technologies in such as IoT and registration of the operation and also the soil data. This here is an example of exactly what was captured onto the AI as the growth of the, uh, the, the grape was happening. And what that allowed one to do was to be able to understand and provide feedback to the uh, wine grower, the vineyard grower, that you may actually want to cull some of the, um, the grapes. So that way you actually can preserve the energy that is necessary for the plant to go through. So I'd like to, uh, I know we're almost running out of time, so I wanted to give acknowledgement to the groups that I'm working with. I'm working also with Chenolia, which is looking at the AI. We have GenCat, which is looking with us at the agricultural practices. As I mentioned, the university, URV, with Professor Bolin and, Prof and Professor Olska. And my partner on the Trublo, which is Fiona Delaney. I wanted to give you a guys a point of view of actual application, real world application, which are more than just somewhere somebody comes in play, but how we get them to do work and support them in delivering their work. Thank you.